happens here. New teams, new meta, new battleground. Also, our first time tonight seeing Cynix on the stream, so we want to welcome Cynix as well as uh, their, any fan base coming over to watch their match. They have uh, won their way through the bottom of this bracket. This is going to be map pick for, uh, looks like Flame is Lame, as we got first pick, first band coming up for Cynix. And again, you know, we'll have to we'll have to see if they want to uh, do more of the standard banning. And there it is, the Ario coming out right away. Top healer in our meta. I haven't seen her all night. Yeah, and you wouldn't expect something like a Dahaka ban here. I was going to say you might see it, but they end up going with the Anubarak here. So Anubarak with the lockdown and with the cocoon. Seems like something they don't want to deal with here. Yeah, and I, I think that's a good ban. The Anubarak is really hard to deal with uh, when you're when you're in these big team fights in the mid. Uh, being able to quickly take somebody out, dive in past that cocoon target, engage it as a four v five, and then turn around and blow up that target when you are good and ready. Uh, definitely a, a very strong play. So uh, we claim as lame not wanting to see their momentum uh, derailed here. I'm going to take out the Anubarak before it can even uh, get started here. And I'm not sure if, if anyone has watched my analysis HTC Wide Open series, but the Hakka played on Battlefield of Eternity is very strong in terms of you know pressuring those off lanes while you're in that defensive phase. I think Flame is Lame has put them in a tough spot where you know they've now first picked Uther out of everybody, including Tastar, including Dahaka. And now this leaves it all open for Flame is Lame. They can play their game. Yeah, the the draft priorities are a little bit different on Battlefield from most of the rest of the maps in the current meta. Um, because you have to also think about prioritizing that immortal damage. And uh, Uther, a very strong team fighter, very weak on the immortal damage. So if Flame is Lame wants to go back to that same general strategy that they want to go for, uh, Rhaegar, definitely one of the strongest picks on this map because he's got incredibly good immortal damage, not only for supports, but for any hero in the game. Yeah, good call on the Rhaegar. Could see them playing, picking up something like Li Ming too. They picked that up. A lot of people will go into the Lunar to, to really pressure out the Uther, not just for the race potential. But this one might even be, I'm surprised, Genji coming out. Yeah, Genji, not somebody that you typically see on Battlefield of Eternity. His immortal damage, uh, not the strongest. But again, you know, we've seen Flame is Lame with their prioritization on macro. So Genji's ability to almost act as that global, kind of like Dahaka. He can be out in lane soaking, and then all of a sudden, you know, one cyber, uh, one cyber leap, one uh, swift dash in. He can just suddenly be in the team fight, ready to go. Yeah, a lot of open battleground for Genji. The other option that it opens up that I've seen more and more often is a little bit of cheese going for the middle well or the game here. Might have to watch out for that uh, and see what happens here. But with just the Uther pickup, I mean, they don't have a lot to lock down Genji just yet. And he can definitely out poke as well. So right away, Cynix coming out with the Stitches comp. Already good follow-up with the Uther, but they're going to pair that with Greymane. A pretty brilliant draft move here by Cynix. Not only having the good follow-up to the hook with that Greymane Dark Flight dive-in, but Greymane, again, also very good on the immortal damage here on Battlefield of Eternity. Love the Greymane. Haven't seen enough Greymane tonight. It's been a lot of games without a Greymane, so I'm actually happy to see him back. A lot of people get bored seeing the same heroes, but the Greymane playstyle is just so entertaining to watch. I like the pickup on Stitches as well here. You could see a Gorge if uh, Genji decides to go into something like the Dragon Blade. You just pop them into your belly and there's no damage that comes out. So the Vala being hovered here for Flame is lame. Already having their backline uh, sustained damage dealer in the Genji. So uh, not surprising to see that they'd want to take off one of the stronger picks here on Battlefield. Um, also good focus damage to follow up. Uh, but we'll have to see what direction Cynix wants to go in here for this ban. They do have the opportunity 
to apply a bit of a tank chokehold here if they uh, want to go that route. You know, I'm almost tempted to say that we might see a Malthiel here. I don't know if they are able to play that, but Malthiel with his spread damage, a little bit of that Dragon Blade, Genji resets. A little bit scary for Uther. I don't think he can really sustain through that tormented souls. I don't know also if Flame is Lame wants to show that either. You know, if they do have a Malthiel, they might want to save that for the semifinals or the finals. Maybe right now they still go with a Genji Illidan style composition. You know, they're still playing Regar Illidan. They don't want to show anything different yet. And maybe just keep it to like the Illidan Li Ming here. Yeah, Team Cynix taking their time on this ban. They do elect to ban out the Li Ming, um, not wanting to see the counter blow up potential here and the long range poke damage. Uh, also, good immortal damage from Li Ming. But uh, now I'll we'll have to see what Flame is Lane wants to do here. You're right, they could go into the Illidan uh, for sure. I think that's a, that's a solid approach that we've seen work for them quite a lot. Another pseudo global with that hunt. So, could see some later game side soaking with the Illidan. But, um,. Well, not, not as standard a pick here on Battlefield in the overall meta. You know, whoever's drafting for Team Cynics right now, that Li Ming ban is very smart. Uh, that that denial of the reset with Genji, you know, the denial of the poke damage, the range damage. I think Team Cynics here is really showing their strength early on just with these first few rounds of the draft. I think Team Cynics here is going to give Flame is Lame a bit of a run for their money. So setting up for that hyper carry, the Tassadar comes out, another Muradin. So we're going to see Shot once again throwing out those Storm Bolts, trying to get the CC blow up potential here. But who's the hyper carry is the big question. The easy answer is Illidan. But will Flame is Lame pull out anything else different with that last pick? Yeah, they've really left it. And I, I like how they loop in because... There could be some misdirection here. It could be the Illidan. You might draft for it. Then they swap into a Tracer, but you draft against that. So then all of a sudden they pull out something like a Lunara, and then you're stuck. Uh, you know, the, the answer here, they might just go into the Arthas. He's going to do okay as a solo lane. He'll have a little bit of race damage. That lockdown stitches Arthas. I mean, you that that's your condition there. You look for those hooks. You look for that lockdown. You get Grey Mane his takedown. But does that do anything against the other carries that you're worried about? The Tracers, the Lunaras, the Cassias even. Arthas and Nazebo coming out. Nazebo, a very interesting pick here from Team Cynix. Uh, this is not necessarily a map that you always see go to the late game, where Nazebo is an extremely late game heavy hero. But he does have decent focus damage potential. And the Tracer coming out here from Flame is Lame. So they're going to choose to uh, go with that more mobile style. Not unlike the Illidan, but instead it's going to be Tracer here. Yeah, nazebo has got some options for builds. I think they were just trying to cover their ground in terms of having auto attack and ability damage. Making sure that they didn't put all their eggs into one basket where, you know... All of a sudden, Flame is Lame could go into something like a Cassia, and oops, we were all auto attack damage. So I think they were just trying to go for a rounded comp, but are they prepared to deal with the Tracer? We'll have to see how it plays out. Yeah, the chase potential is real between Genji and Tracer. You talk about these Overwatch heroes being some of the most mobile in the game, and that is indeed what we're going to see coming out from Flame is Lame here in this uh, top eight series against Team Cynics to see if it works out for him. The Illidan certainly worked out in the last series, so why not Tracer in this one? We saw some legendary Tracer play from Legend last week, so uh, let's see if he can repeat his performance here tonight. Yeah, I do really like what Flame is Lame is doing here. They have narrowed, significantly narrowed their uh, hero pull down, I think for, for a positive reason here. Uh, they're playing a very focused style. They aren't giving a lot away. They're finding good success with it. And they're not having it to change anything up. So I think Flame is lame here. All right, we are loading on in Battlefield of Eternity. On the left, it is going to be Flame is Lame Trap Queen. It's going to be playing the Tassadar Legend 
is going to be on that Tracer. Deadly Ice on the Genji. Dark Chimera once again back on the Rhaegar. And Shot is going to be playing Muradin. While the pause is going on, we might as well get to the other side. Uh, we do have Team Cynics making their first appearance here. Uh, it's going to be Valimar playing Greymane, Zane Hyde on Stitches, Caleb Reese on Uther. You've got Xander on Nazebo and Vereno on Arthas. A little bit of power flicking going on apparently so uh, we'll see if we can get this going here and there it is the gates are open and we're gonna see uh two three rotation coming out here for team cynics putting three up here in the top let's see if they can maybe find out a hook and stun target for valimar to just jump on here yeah, standing beside each other in the fog here, Deadly Eyes might decide to actually check himself in that bush there. Ends up having the protect. He's going to be all right. Deadly Eyes not afraid of what's lurking in the shadows, as long as he's got that protect cooldown up, at least. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, we do see a little bit of a push-in, but uh, Shot taking a lot of damage here in response. Both the tanks are actually taking quite a bit of damage. Uh, once again, this double support coming out for Flame is Lame. We'll put one in each lane here for now. Uh, these builds are making me happy, Jason. We've got Pandemic coming out from Nazebo. This is the Toad build. I'd like to see him survive here, though. Uh, Nazebo goes down. The dive is real. Vereno, though, no return takedown. So much mobility. You look at you look at Legend on on Tracer here. One, all of a sudden, you're in a 3v2, and you didn't even know it. Uh, hopefully later in the game, though, these toads will stack up. You'll be able to send them out there, and Tracer won't be able to, to just dash in uh, without taking any of that extra toad damage. Now, also really interesting, though, is the Uther build. Hammer of the Lightbringer at level 1. So that's one that we actually haven't seen uh, coming from... Coming out from our Uthers. I love that level one talent, particularly here on Battlefield of Eternity, where you can sometimes get locked in these long, long battles. It gives Uther more mana back to be able to uh, be a little bit more sustainy, not in terms of the raw healing numbers, but how long you can sustain that mana to be able to heal as you poke back and forth. Those auto attacks gonna passively give him back more healing. And then eventually, once he gets that quest completed, it's going to be a cooldown reduction on that stun, which is going to be very handy for the Stitches blow-up comp. I'm really impressed here. Team Cynics is actually responding really well. I'm sure that they're still soaking lanes while Flames Lane is doing that, and so they don't fall significantly behind. Both teams picking up level four. So Team Cynics here is showing their understanding of the game. Yeah, not over, not overreacting to what Flame is Lame is doing with this defensive, uh, defensive sort of uh, rotation here. However, a little bit of an advantage grabbed here as they are able to pick off the Muradin in the bot lane, getting a little bit too overly aggressive. And that is first blood. Well, that's that's actually not first blood. One to one on the kill count here. Team Cynics going to be able to jump right on this, and the race is on here. With the gray main, this should mean that they actually take this first immortal. And so Team Cynics taking the advantage over Flame is Lame in this early game. A look at the rotation here from Flame is Lame. Instantly rotating their members out to the lane, not even trying to race for these immortals. And instead getting a lot of damage in the bot lane, getting a little bit of XP advantage. And uh, not, not over responding here. Not freaking out early here off this first immortal that uh, typically they don't get that much done in the first place. Yeah, the speed at which they made that trade and calculated it to say, we're losing this immortal, take the bottom towers as a trade, that is pretty impressive as well from the side of Flame is Lane, making that decision uh, in such a short amount of time. So right away, front wall going down. And look at Team Cynics. They go ahead and grab the Shaman Camp. It's going to have a little bit of extra push in here 
with this. Caleb Reese going in deep, trying to get Legend, but they are going to turn on him and be able to take him out in short order. And the collapse is real from the side of Flame is Lame. Even with that takedown, top four goes down, and that actually keeps them even on experience. But with a man down, that does give Flame is Lame a little bit of an advantage. They are able to make their rotations for the Mercenary Camp sooner now. Uh, but still, well played from Team Cynics here, getting that early Immortal uh, and you know getting decent value out of it. Zane and that potato internet. Brief pauses here. I like that these teams are getting right back in. Right away, uh, rotation to the top as side of Flame is Lame going to be able to quickly grab this Cosmer camp to push in this top lane. Cynics will be yeah. here to clean it up, though. No big deal. Do you think Cynics needed to at least get fourth there because of that trade that they made in the bottom lane or because of the trade that uh, Flame is Lame decided to make in the bottom lane, taking their towers as well? This means Team Cynics has to now move down to the bottom lane, defend, and hope to take some of the towers before the next phase. Right away, Flame is Lame quickly rotating, grabbing these camps, pushing out in each of these lanes. Yeah, Kazra can't be in push down in the middle. There will be better timing here and better uh, over pressure for lane because the Fallen Shaman haven't been taken yet. So wait for them to time this out. Wait for them to maybe even put some pressure on the top lane. We approach your position. I missed this earlier, Hero, but yet again we have that Storm talent at level 1, the Psy Infusion, coming out yet again from Trap Queen. So prioritizi prioritizing the uh, AoE damage ability. And it's going to give them good solid poke later in the game to put damage on these Immortals. Zane Hyde here, caught in a tricky spot here, goes for a hook, gets taken down, but the stun's on shot, and he's taking a lot of damage. Nobody's able to reach him, though, but Reino is marching forward, trying to slow him down, but he is just taking damage now. Finally, they decide to call a retreat here and beat it back towards their immortal, realizing they've gone a little bit too far. All the while, the Shaman Camp pushing in the bot lane, giving some serious structure advantage to the side of Flame is Lame on there. So we do see Cynics backing up to try and clear that out for the moment, but the immortal damage is real. That Scythe Storm going to be able to close it out. Halftime going over for Flame is Lame. Not a single damage put down uh, for Team Cynics yet on, onto their immortal. But Zane Hyde is back, and he is going to be busy looking for hooks. The first one goes out another six seconds before that comes back. Shot jumps in, but he's in on those circles. Nice cleanse from Dark Chimera. Greymane goes down and the disengage root here. Pulse Bomb goes out. Zane Hyde again, body block. Legend under the towers recalls out. Two takedowns. Flame is lame. Closing in on level 10. That's going to allow them to get a full shielded immortal. That should be heading towards the top lane for this one. And uh, they can even out a little bit of that damage in the top. All the while, level 10 has been picked up here for Flame is lame. Still about half a level out for Cynix. So they're going to need to find a way to make some sort of safe defense here. Otherwise, they might end up having a rough time with this push-in from Flame is Lame. Team Cynix needs to be careful. They don't have level 10 here. These powers are extremely low. They're guaranteed to go down. This is a full shield. It is very likely to be able to move through this fort. And so the real defense is likely back at the keep. So hopefully Team Cynics decides to back off here. They also have Arthas down in the bottom lane. So really sticking around up here without any safety. Good thing you got helping hand. But Valmar takes a pulse bomb. Going to poke him down a little bit. Gonna go ahead and tap the well. Level 10 is now in. Divine Storm coming out from Caleb Reese. They are looking for the full lockdown potential here. And the hook in onto Legend, the Gorge, and uh, the recall going to be rough to try and get Legend out. Look at the the blinks in. Legend going to make them work for this pickoff. Blinking around and uh, giving a little bit more opportunity for the Immortal to get some value, giving some room for the rest of Flame is Lame to get out. But that's going to be a nice pick going over to Zane Hyde and Team Cynics. Fantastic hook. I think that was the only way they defended their keep there. That was a very strong push coming in. And had that not happened, boy, I think that might have been a nine-minute keep.
right away we see deadly ice going down to the bottom getting the soak out trying to work their way to that level 13 talent tier and uh should be in right around the time we see these next immortals spawning a little bit before we'll have to see if cynics can also make their way to 13 or if this is going to be another another uh talent tier disadvantage for team cynics uh, on this next round on this next round of immortals uh, just to check in, Nazebo about three quarters of his way you done. So is Uther. Uh, Grey Mane about two thirds also. All on their quest. But more exciting is the Ravenous Spirit coming out. I'm excited for that one to come out. Yeah, we don't see much of Ravenous Spirit. Gargantuan, definitely the standard pickup here. But looking to get some long range damage. Well, there's not a whole lot of chase potential over on the side of Team Cynics. So the Gargantuan being able to uh, follow members and try and uh, get some picks, finish off some kills for Cynics, I think that could definitely be a tool for them to uh, be able to utilize here from Xander. It looks like Team Cynics here not really feeling the pressure at all, trying to push in for that level 13 here. Uh, Tracer was in the top lane, so, you know, not really feeling the threat from Genji here. Another Gorge goes out. They kidnap Muradin here. Lock him in. Shot does pop the uh, Avatar though. And the turn is real. Xander's going to be taken down. Deadly Ice going in with that Dragon Blade. The Ancestral comes out to be able to keep Legend up there. And, and Vareno is going to end up going down as well to this chase potential. Five for nothing. Full team wipe. Flame is lame with the response there. As you get that you get that gorge, but it was on the Muradin. Not exactly the target you want there, hero. Beautiful collapse there from Flame is lame. You're right. Muradin as a gorge target. You know they dropped him right in the middle of that zombie wall. That's exactly what they wanted, but popping the avatar just didn't take any damage. Yeah, not quite enough burst damage potential there. Uh, even with the gray main damage. And uh, one interesting thing that I did not notice from Cynics, go for the throat instead of the cursed bullet here. Not going to have as much blow potential. Zanehide hits the hook and the gorge onto Legend. Um, they hit the root afterwards and Legend getting so low. Trap Queen getting that last second shield out. But look at Xander with that Ravenous Spirit getting the pick off there. And holy cow, Cynics working hard for the picks here, Hero. Yeah, and Zane Hyde with a helping hand on Valmar to get him out of trouble. Cynics has some good coordination here, and you know, getting the pick onto onto Tracer really turns things their way. But the force wall here, Trap Queen is trying to make plays. Moreno caught, he pops the ghouls, he goes back forward. Another route onto shot here, and he gets the cleanse. He's still sticking around though, hoping to make something happen. The rest of the team turning it around. Deadly Ice looking for takedowns, looking for resets, but Ancestral Healing having to come out while the rest of the enemy team is still pretty healthy. All the while, Team Cynic slowly poking down this Immortal. They are starting to get a little bit low though. They're gonna go back and tap the well. Flame is lame, recognizing this. They're going to rotate directly to the bottom and start working on this immortal. Good job recognizing that they did have to back up. Whether it was to go tap or to clean up that bottom lane, Team Cynics had to go and move away from that middle area. Now the chase is on. Vereno here might get bodied in here. Shot getting a little bit low on man. Decides to call it a day. Back it up. Go tap. Re-engage with this about 50% shield immortal. Yet again, we're going to see Flame is Lame pushing in with a, a pretty pretty sizable Immortal. And look at level 16. They're going to pick it up off the heels of this wave here. Uh, but Deadly Ice gets hooked and gorged right before this. So they're going to be looking to follow up on him. The D-Storm comes out and the blow up onto the Genji before he can do anything about it. Team Cynics with the defensive posturing here, Hero. Yeah, another great hook, and this time they land the full combo here too. Dropping the D-Storm, dropping the Annihilating Spirit, or not yet Annihilating, but I'm assuming if we get there, the Ravenous Spirit. They end up making this defense, and the keep stands. That should be the level 20 upgrade name for it, Annihilating Spirit. 
Yeah, they are. They are really hitting the combo here. That is keeping them in this one. They are able to defend the bottom keep. It is very low here. And look at the rotation. Flame is lame. Going to probably look to uh, rotate in and try and see if they could pick up this keep with the help of this Cosmo camp in the bottom. Yeah, and I, I feel like what should have already been two keeps here have been two very, very good defenses from Team Cynix. Uh, I think any other team here might have fallen and, and crumbled. Uh, those hooks from Zanehide, those are the playmakers. So as soon as they see a couple members of Cynix show in the top, the rotation in, and they will be able to clean up this keep very easily. Level 16 still not quite here for Cynix. They're going to clean up this camp, but they're not going to have the chase potential to uh, make the side of Flamers Lane pay for it on this rotation. Yeah. Maybe, maybe a bit of an over-rotation there, too. They didn't have 16. That keep was basically at 10% HP. There's really no way they're going to defend that. It would have been nice to have them just go ahead and take that top mercenary camp, buy them some more time, get a little bit of experience. Right now, this trade, though, definitely favors them. That catches them up to level 16. We've got an even fight here, but cannons in the bottom lane. Yeah, pressure in both lanes here coming for Team Cynix. No global, no pseudo global. Uh, so they are going to be fighting with both of the lanes pushing out. Uh, but a favorable spawn here for Team Cynix with this immortal spawning in the back. Meanwhile, Shot gets uh, tugged in, but they actually decide not to waste the Gorge cooldown. I like that patient play coming out from Zanehyde here. Remembering how that worked on the last time, Hero. They're going to go ahead and uh, wait for a better hook target next time around. Now wait for the next target, but you can't wait too long because there's pressure in the top lane, mounting pressure in the bottom lane. This fight needs to be decided and decided fast. An amazing force wall there from Trap Queen, preventing Zanehyde from being able to get shot back. But they do get double pick there off the heels of that one. Deadly Ice in the back trying to do what he can, but Valimar jumps in with the Dark Flight following Greymane off of that, or following Genji off of that swift dodge there wow three for one team cynics with a team fight that they needed here they got to make this quick though top lane the keep is going down anyway in the bottom they've got to clean that up yeah so they are going to send the back to clean this up two members still alive it's the two supports so we are going to see them just rotate out and go towards this bottom camp it is going to allow cynics to clean up these lanes and uh, they are going to be able to rotate down and start to get some damage on this immortal uh, i would imagine they're going to get this before flame is lane can do anything about it here yeah they should be able to race it down they should be able to burn it down and now what flame is lame has got to be worried about is grouping up for those team fights divine storm into the ravenous spirit i mean the damage on that was massive and i don't think they were ready for it Great call there by Team Cynix, disengaging right at the right moment. 506 health. One cocktail would almost do it. There it is. The, the frogs will come in to finish it off. Pretty much full shield immortal going over to the side of Team Cynix. We'll be pushing in the bottom lane to counter push those cannons. But look at Deadly Ice on the Genji and Legend here. They are going to push up. They're going to make sure that they're trading out this keep for it here. Yeah, they're not necessarily pressuring core, but they might be pressuring core. <laughs> I'm not, not going to say they're pressuring core, but... <laughs> yeah, and this is going to end up being a race. They do send Vareno back on the Arthas to try and clean up here. And he actually gets a ton of damage out on the Legend, but look at the turnaround. Deadly Ice and Legend uh, are actually not going to quite be able to get him down. Look at the uh, sustain on the Arthas. In the other lane, though... We do see that the side of Cynix are pushing in with four. The hook in the gorge coming out from Zanehyde. It's going to end up being a race. They are able to get the pick out on Trap Queen. All the while, Vareno is, is defending out here. So this is something that Flame is Lame really got to worry about here. They got to get back. Our great army of the dead to keep him up. And Vareno makes the defense. And this means the keep goes down. This immortal still has 100% here. They're not going to stick around, though. They have to back up and wait for Arthas to get there. But as he gets here, the cavalry is here. Uther goes down, but he's going to heal them up. They're going to turn this around. Ravenous Spear goes out. Shot is getting low. 
deadly ice here. He's gonna be next. Valimar with the takedown, and they're turning this around. Shot makes the jump, the slam slows him down. Pulse strike, pulse bomb. Legend gets a takedown here. The Immortal though on the core, and they're starting to move in. This is a very tense moment for both of these teams. The Immortal pushes in 70% on the core, and uh, the side of Team Cynics are committed to the cause. Greymane is gonna fall down. Xander is also getting very low here. Vareno, the last one on the core. The shield coming out is going to be enough to save it. They save the core. Meanwhile, on the other side, they are starting to stack up the catapults. They can march right across here, and it should be enough here for Flame is Lame. 13% Flame is Lame makes the defense, focusing down Greymane, focusing down Nazebo. Murden jumped in the way to eat some of those toads, make sure they couldn't get that damage. The Pulse Bomb onto Arthas. They made that defense work. You got to give a lot of credit to Team Cynics in that one, though. The full commitment. They knew that that was their opportunity. It was the best opportunity that they were going to get to finish out this one. And... My goodness, Hero, am I looking forward to the next game in this series as uh, we've, got, we've, got, we've got ourselves a series here. Two amazing teams going back and forth here in the Open Division. Flame is lame. Game number one. Team Cynics, though, nearly, 13%, nearly had that one. Yeah, I really love the macro call. The Arthas at the end there, able to push them off just just thir that 13 percent is the difference here and uh, we'll have to see we'll have to see if we get another game that is that close uh solid macro play coming out all game long from flame is lame uh able to finish it off at the end and uh able to get that core defense at the last moment but uh and kill count also going over to flame is lame in general i felt like they were up there for quite a while cynics almost came back in that one just not quite enough room to be able to come back and uh, finish off that comeback victory. Yeah, the real story for me is Team Cynics' combo. The hook, the gorge, drop them in a zombie wall, divine storm, you throw the ravenous, you throw everything in that pile, and they got takedowns. They got takedowns on takedowns. 16 to nine though, four flame is lame. Uh, but that was really how Team Sanix came back, was just getting those one picks in key moments. Yeah, pretty incredible finish to that one. And we are going to be heading in to game number two very shortly here. Both of these teams pretty experienced here. So I expect the uh, match turnover rate to be pretty quick for these guys. Uh, we'll have to see what map they want to take us to here um, but let's see yeah i'm i'm excited to see where this one goes um uh, if that first game was any indication of how the next two will go flame is lame has got to step it up they were 13 percent away from dropping that game to team cynics and team cynics they have to be very very encouraged by their play they had that game i think if i'm team cynics going into this next one i'm thinking we got this I don't care if they're the number three team. We got this. We had it. Yeah, no reason for the side of Team Cynics to be discouraged off of that one. You are 100% correct. And we are 100% moving on into game number two and Cursed Hollow. Talk about a map macro-friendly map. Uh, pretty much the original macro map. The game of when to split push and when to go after tributes uh, can be can be a real deadly one here on uh, Cursed Hollow. Yeah, and I think if if there's one thing that I'm going to be worried about here, it is going to be Illidan play. Uh, we'll probably actually see an adjustment with a Tassadar ban, which might mean we get an Ariel in here somewhere. Uh, Ariel and Dahaka may show up. I think some of the draft priorities are going to change and some of the bands are going to change because of it. Yeah, and as these teams start to get to know each other more and more, and we will start to see the meta within the match change a little bit on these bands. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Stitches band come out in this one uh, if you are Flame is Lame. Uh, I feel like I feel like they, they hit a lot of really impactful 
Hook and Gorge plays in that last one for the side of Team Cynics. Yeah, and this is going to be, again, our first time on Cursed Hollow tonight. So I'm excited to see what the priorities are, if we're going to see any new rotations come out. Uh, I think Flame is Lame showed us a couple of new rotations on uh, on Infernal Shrines. And so maybe here on Cursed Hollow, they've got something else prepared as well. So right away, I'm going to see first pick, first ban going over yet again to Team Cynics. I think Flame is Lame might be allergic to first picks here tonight, Hero. I don't know what the deal is here. Yeah, I mean, they must have... Um, I, I think they like hiding that last pick. I mean, there's some teams that, you know, think first pick is, is the strongest and, you know, they have a higher percentage win. But a lot of the times when you have the battleground pick and you have something that's, I guess, hidden in that last pick that can't be countered, then you have an advantage that way. Yeah, having that last pick is uh, definitely more influential than I think a lot of people give it credit for. But uh, let's see if this is more standard with the Dahaka and the Ariel again, or if these teams start to... Focus each other out. Look at the Abathur band coming out right at the beginning. Uh, you know, it is kind of the home of Abathur here on Cursed Hollow. We don't usually see a lot of teams prioritize it first. It's a nice way to, to ban out a few different things. You know, Abathur Greymane, Abathur Illidan, a lot of those Abathur compositions. It does leave Dahaka open for them. I wonder if Team Cynics really does want to play that macro style game uh, this also does mean you're giving up Tassadar, though. Yeah, a lot of, of really high-priority open picks here. Um, you know, the Uther is still, of course, available. Um, worth noting again that we'll see Ariel thrown out before this uh, match starts. And uh, it is going to be Tassadar, but look at the Genji in response. Uh, Insta-locked here by Flame is Lame. They are going to go full macro with the Genji and the Dahaka. There you go. They got themselves a Tassadar. Let's see what they do with it. Are they going to go ahead and pick up that support Vala here? Yeah, definitely something that is strong to pair with here. But uh, definitely taking their time thinking about it as well. Um, I will say that, that the uh, Genji Abathur is another thing to worry about. But look at this. Cynics taking a page out of Flame is Lame's book. Gonna go ahead and pick up the Illidan. Let's go. We got <laughs> Illidan on Team Cynic's side this time around. Let's see how Flame is Lame responds to this. We're gonna take a page out of their book and bring it to them. Now, maybe they watched their old games. Maybe they scouted them out. Maybe this is just what Team Cynic's likes to run. Maybe they have got a fire Illidan, uh, and we just haven't seen it yet. Yeah, Team Cynic's. Trying to make a name for themselves in this one in the top eight. They'll try and bring themselves to a game three here in this series. And look at the ETC ban out here. Flame is lame. Maybe knowing something that, uh, that we don't here. Uh, ETC, not usually prioritized too high. But uh, we do see him occasionally on these bigger maps for the stage dive potential. And uh, Flame is lame. Might also just be worried about how many counters that they're going to end up running to the mosh pit. Uh, kind of prior, kind of foreshadowing what they might pick here a little bit. Yeah, yeah there's definitely not a lot for interrupts there. Uh, I like the Arthas band on the other side if they are playing. They're really not giving away much here with the Malfurion and Nubarak. I like the Twilight Dream option. Yeah, Twilight Dream uh, is also a really good counter. Um... It's also a really good counter to that Illidan when he dives in to be able to stop him from being able to escape or uh, or put up his uh, invulnerability. So uh, we will see. We'll see that. It, it, well, and also you talk about earlier the the double support, the uh, the or the roots talent at seven for Malfurion to really lower the healing coming in. Uh, so that will definitely hinder Uther's ability to save him when he starts to go in deep after the members of Flame is Lame. 
They do end up picking up the Vala with this double support style. Now they need a strong front line. And I'm wondering if it might be, you know, they might fall back onto a Johanna, but I like it. I would prefer them to go a little bit more aggressive, get that secured lockdown onto the Genji. Full macro build. Flame is lame. Even going all the way out to the Sylvanas for the excellent split push. Uh, is this the dream that you were looking for earlier, Hero? We'll have to see. <laughs> uh, it definitely could be. If they could get the Cocoon onto Uther, then they could make it happen. Um, that way you, t you take out... Well, it depends too. They can look at that level 7. If Uther decides to go for Guardian uh, of Ancient Kings, then he doesn't have Clans. He only has D-Shield. If you can wait out D shield or just get rid of Uther, then you can go for that mind control. But Wailing Arrow is just too strong this time around because of the Illidan factor. If you can Twilight Dream into another Silence, that's a very, very quiet Illidan. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, you got, you got double support with Vala and Diablo. That's, um, it's not too scary to have to deal with. But um, as you were saying earlier, with that Illidan and that Diablo pick, with Illidan, you want a tank that can dive in with you and help you as you go in. So that's definitely what we're going to see with that Diablo pick up here. But we are loading in game number two. Flame is lame versus Team Cynics. Flame is lame is your team on the left. They are up one nothing in the series so far. Shot going to be playing the Anubarak. Legend is going to be playing the uh, Sylvanas. Deadly Ice on the Genji. Dark Chimera going to be playing the Malfurion. And Trap Queen is going to be on to Haka. Three, two, Team Cynics on the red side. I need you to do 13% better. Valmar on Vala. Caleb Reese playing Uther. We've got uh, Xander on Tassadar. Vereno playing the Illidan. And it's Zanehide on Diablo. And instantly, Team Cynics spreading out here. Zanehide with that uh, solo body blocks on the uh, on the minions there. Yeah, great spread from Team Cynics to start out. They had the Sylvanas on the other side, so they went ahead and denied that early advantage. Diablo in the mid lane. They had Tass Illidan split off to the bottom with Uther Vala in the top. So really nice to spread out their DPS here. And now Legend decides to go to that middle lane where nobody is and take a little bit of damage for himself. Yeah, I like how Legend rotated directly to the mid because um, anticipating that Cynics would spread out here, uh, that way Legend could just go wherever the side of Cynics was weakest. They see the Diablo in the mid. Zaynite even trying to get shot over the wall. That burrow charge out though. And look at the advantage already gained here. The macro game is real. Flame is lame. Taking down this front wall right away in the mid lane. I think Cynix is looking for for an equal trade here in the bottom lane, but they're just a little bit slower at it. And now with the rotation coming down here, Vereno might be caught out in the middle of nowhere here. He's starting to make his way back. He'll have to make a nice dive. No drag coming out from Trap Queen to punish that flip over top of him. Uh, and they're going to be able to turn this around, look for towers of their own. Vereno being very aggressive here. We do see the drag out onto him there. Legend going to going to barely not be able to take that takedown. Yeah, Legend thought about it. You could see him thinking about it. Do I take the E? Do I take it? I think you might have had a shot there. Might not have had the cues to follow it up, uh, the Withering Arrows. But right now, they're going to keep pushing it in Legend, disabling these structures. Xander pushing Trap Queen out, but that doesn't stop Legend from shooting. Yeah, look at all the ammo just going to waste here as Legend able to take out that bottom turret. And again, just rotating where he knows that uh, not gonna have to worry about the side of Cynics answering with equal numbers. All the while, both teams rotating out, grabbing their camps. It's gonna be a little bit of an advantage here for Team Cynics as uh, this first tribute will spawn in the top lane. Uh, you, you do think it's an advantage for Cynics, but they do have Dehaka who's got that global. He can stick around until they absolutely need him. They have 
any kind of interrupts. Well, they got a new Brack and a couple of Beetles. They've got Deadly Ice for a little bit of Poke Malfurion who can do the same as well. So Team Cynix here really needs to be aggressive. And oh. there's the aggression. <laughs> Malfurion gets focused and they put an end to this poke battle. Wow, you talk about aggression. Yeah, Deadly Ice is going to be able to get in here for maybe one more safe poke. But uh, yet another pick. They are making Flame is Lame pay for uh, coming in and getting those interrupts. Not to mention also leaving Trap Queen in the bot lane. He is able to clear up that bottom siege camp as well as take out the front wall here. We'll be able to make it out safely. But uh, first Trib and the first couple of picks in this game going over to Team Cynix. Yeah, if they had a few of those stay alive, they would have come out ahead, pretty far ahead on experience here. But Team Cynix is responding very well. They're making the aggressive plays when they have to. And they're also responding uh, equally as well to the macro game as well. Level seven to level seven. Team Cynix, toe to toe with Flame is Lame. Right away we see both teams rotating out to grab their bruiser camps here in this one. We do see Flame is Lame picking them up a little bit early. It's going to push pretty well into this wall, which uh, of course is practically dead as it is at the moment. If I'm looking at this position right now, Flame is Lame is playing the macro a little bit better. And with this takedown on Uther, this might allow them to pick up a free tribute and some extra structural damage. It's a very well-timed pick coming out for Flame is Lame. It's going to be a little while before Uther can get back to this one. Do have some opportunities for Cynics to poke. We'll have to see if that's the route they want to take. Vareno actually getting caught out here. They're going to try to full collapse on him, but he's able to rotate out and away. It's actually going to give Uther enough time to rotate in here. So Flame is Lame maybe uh, over-pursuing a little bit. We're going to see Xander still... try and get in to get that interrupt, and he will. I think in some ways you might have just wanted them to have captured that. Oh, Legend dives in, disables the tower, allows Deadly Ice to keep going. That is some coordination right there. Legend actually mm. gets taken down by Zanehide <laughs> with the rotation. Back and forth we go in this series. Both teams showing us their moves They're on full display here. And now we've got the full rotation to this Trib, and Genji gets completely blown up there. Zanehide getting all kinds of value from that Diablo pick. The aggressive comp as they continue to chase. Not even worried about picking up the Trib. They are going full bore in after Trap Queen. Chasing him to the ends of the earth. And that is what Illidan can do for you here, Hero. On a big map like Cursed Hollow. Tribute number two goes to Team Cynix. Oh, Legend is caught out as well here. Wow, Flame is Lame had that good coordination in that middle. They dove, they dove that middle forward, get, got that takedown with the rotations from Team Cynix to cover their team and chase further the Illidan composition showing why it's so powerful here. It is still level 10 to level 10, but the quicker rotation onto the enemy boss here, Team Cynix is gonna take a huge advantage going into this next phase. And if a tribute spawns here, Double boss with a curse. Team Cynics might get extremely far ahead. Oh, and Shot able to have an amazing burrow charge to get out of that uh, that hunt and the APOC combo. So that's two pretty sizable cooldowns down now for Team Cynics as we head on into this next uh, tribute phase. Yeah, a little surprising that they just went ahead and popped that on someone like a Nurak here. Uh, not even ensuring that they did have those stuns. But I like the aggression. I mean, they wanted to make a play and they committed to it. Flame is lame up here trying to contest this boss play. Moreno uh, is, is back in the back here on shot. They are going to end up collapsing on him, but both teams are committed to this. Tahaka actually still in the bottom and uh look at the look at this double silence play coming out here from flame is lame they are able to get the first pick tassadar goes down genji will be killed in response though the d shield and valimar trying to knock everyone down vareno getting those heals from uther's ghost and the the 2v2 gonna end up being one here by flame is lame 
And look at Verena with the hunt. They're going to turn that into a four for three exchange. Uh, they opened that up so well with the Wailing Arrow right on the boss point. And then that fight, Uther went down. And that was what turned the whole thing. If Uther had been the last one to be taken down, I think Flame is Lame could have taken that fight. But Uther going down first meant he kept healing up Valimar, meant he kept healing up Vereno, and the fight turned in their favor. Team Cynics up an entire level here in this one. They've got this Bosch pushing in the top. They will invade the Siege Camp to have a little bit of extra push. Look at the APOC legend able to blink over the wall. Zainhide going to have to back out of this situation. But uh, again, able to dodge that APOC as uh, Zainhide went in trying to get that combo. But they are able to catch Trap Queen out here in the middle of no man's land. And they, he is going to end up going down. Another pick over to Team Cynics. Yeah, the Forest Wall catch him out. Boss is going to go down. They've got Siege Giants here and still level 13. A man advantage. Hunt goes in. They're moving in for it. Twilight Dream shuts this down, though. Diablo goes down, and this is going to be the counter turn here. As Legend backs up just for a little bit, but don't be afraid to see the Dragon Blade come out. And there it goes. Reno getting low. Dragon Blade coming forward. This could be multiple resets here. Deadly Ice. Living on the edge with about no health, but actually Vareno getting the kill onto Dark Chimera, setting his sights on... <laughs> oh my goodness, the double kill there from Vareno, getting some help there from Uther's Ghost. And now he's going to back up and have the opportunity to cast this Trib. I don't know if he wants to stall it out at all, but uh, Haka is going to be able to get in here in time. Trap King Queen will be here, and uh, Vareno will have to back up, but... Huge plays coming out from both teams. Flame is lame. Huge counter engage there. Yeah, Caleb Reese from beyond the grave doing his job. Eternally devoted to his team and keeping him up every single time. Caleb Reese goes in. His deaths are impactful. He's getting some trait value this game. Deaths more impactful than life? I, I don't know, but either way. Team Cynix. Maybe Cynics. overstaying there a little bit in the top. Um, maybe pushing a little bit too hard. I think that dive in under under the double towers was maybe a little bit too far. But you got to respect their commitment to the strategy that they have here. Speaking of Stain which. Hide. <laughs> Popping off. Malfurion. Single target. Isolated. No stuns. No survivability. No way out. Team Cynics is catching Flames Lame off guard. The aggression is real from Zanehide and Team Cynix. They've got the they've got the damage to back it up from Valimar as well. Zanehide even going in again on the active tower, just keeping Flame as lame honest here. I was afraid they were gonna round it out with something like a Murden, maybe a Johanna. They went ahead and went for the Diablo, and they are making it work. They're making this aggressive style, charging in. For those stuns, Zane Hyde goes in every single time it's off cooldown. Not waiting here. Dhaka is up in the top. Level 16, not quite picked up for either team. Wailing Arrow, not in time to be able to save Anubarak. He's the first to fall here. Twilight Dream trying to turn. Deadly Ice goes in with that Dragon Blade. Able to get the protected status, but he ends up going down to Valimar and that Strafe. Dahaka also falling down as he comes down into this one. Three for one so far for Team Cynix. And Vareno is not done. He's going to clean house as Team Cynix gets a full team wipe. Full team wipe. The curse to boot. And Vareno is it's just his show. He keeps going forward. Bottom already opened up. The gate's not even there. This is a keep, if not two. I like the comment coming in from Aether Hots in the chat. You can't silence Uther if he's dead. <laughs> it's true. This, uh, double, the double uh, silence comp not quite working out, I think, the way Flame is Lame would have liked it. And that's going to be the first keep of the game in the bottom going over to the side of Team Cynics. And uh, they are going to end up backing off here. But they could end up going for boss there. Looks like there are, there's a little bit of indecision here. But uh, every lane is pushing in. There's a huge wave in top. 
That needs to be cleaned up. And look at the engage. The APOC, the hunt. Deadly Ice is going to have to charge out of here. But Vereno not willing to let him go for free. And the longer they hold them here, the better. Because they're waiting for that top lane to go down. Uh, and if they spot too many up in the top lane, well, they just back out for a boss. Yeah, very patient, very solid macro play coming out from Team Cynix here. Not quite able to pick up that top keep, but the boss might be able to finish that off for him here. Both teams going to trade out boss, but that is a very favorable trade for Team Cynix right now. Yeah, this boss for Team Cynix guarantees them that top keep. This is going to be two keeps to none. If you look at Team Cynix's side, forts are still up. 13 minutes into the game, 19 takedowns to 10. Team Cynics is very, very far ahead. But don't get me wrong, Flame is Lame is not out of the game yet. Their core still stands, and they've got a Sylvanas. With one favorable team fight, they could push this all the way. Now they do have the boss pushing in the bottom. It's going to be uncontested, so it is going to end up picking up that fort. And we'll be able to walk in further, but Legend receiving that hunt from Illidan completely blown up here. The counter engage is on with the silence, though, but Deadly Ice is going to fall, and Team Cynics is moving forward in this one yet again. They get a third pick on Anubarak, and I think this is going to end up being game, Hero. That was insanely coordinated. Zane Hyde with the charge, the flip, the charge, and the hunt connects right at the end of that. There was no chance for Sylvanas to cast anything. This is it. Team Cynix taking game number two. GG. Team Cynix forcing us into a game number three here late into the Monday night rounds of HGC Open. And uh, boy, am I ready to cast this third game already, Hero. This, is, this has been quite the series to watch so far. Yeah, and that wasn't all just Vereno. That wasn't all just Zide. You had Caleb Reese slinging heels. Yes, he had three deaths, but guess what? Almost every is impactful. Valimar on the Vala, tons of damage coming out from the back line there. Really exciting, really well played. Team Cynics is showing up. And these guys are already ready to go into game number three. They are ready to get this series over. And where better to go for these two teams than Towers of Doom? We're gonna see lots of very exciting team fighting on this one. And uh, the macro game is gonna be a little bit less impactful here. It's still always, you know, macro of course, always a factor, but uh, Towers of Doom, it's really all about the team fight potential. Yeah, and I really hope, I really hope Flame is Lame has something special for this one. Uh, you know, that last one was, was Cursed Hollow, one of the fairly standard maps. They got the Illidan picked away. I don't know if they were angling for one, but they definitely let it go by taking Genji and Dahaka first. Maybe they've got to go back to that. Maybe they started off again with a Regar Illidan like they did in those first series. Uh, but they definitely have changed their draft style. Yeah, they may they may be uh, taking Team Cynics a little bit more seriously after that game too. Here, maybe needing to pull out all the stops to make sure that they uh, bring their best foot forward to this game number three. But you're right, definitely a little bit of change up where we hadn't seen that from Flame is Lame so far tonight. So we'll have to see if they go back to what they know on on uh, Towers of Doom. And right away that Stitches ban, they remember back to that game one and how close that was. Yeah, Zane Hyde, I mean, I don't know if he is worth target banning. Take him off the Stitches, maybe take him off the Diablo too. But Tassadar here has been the swing again, and Tassadar showing his strength both times. I think Tassadar must be the first ban, but that means leave, putting Oriel out there, and we haven't seen Oriel let through a draft, not the first round anyway. Yeah, the Oriel ban has been constant. I think, I think the first game of tonight, we did see somebody able to pick up Ario. But uh, since then, it's been the constant ban out. And there it is once again. Our Angel of Hope is not coming through in this one. And we're not going to see her again tonight. Don't want to deal with it. But Tassadar is up. Illidan is up. Dahaka. Where do you even go if your flame is lame? What are you most confident with, I guess, would be my question. And whatever they lock in here... 
It's the Abathur. And who's more confident than Abathur himself? Uh, even even wearing his pajamas late into the night here on Monday night. Thank you very much for joining us, guys. You are in for a treat. Game three, Flame is Lame. Team Cynics on Towers of Doom. And we'll have to see how Team Cynics wants to respond to this. When you see that early Abathur pick, the first thing you know right off the bat, Hero, they're not going to have a strong early game. Uh, you, can usually, you can usually use that to your advantage, and Cynics may decide to go with a really aggressive comp once again to try and punish that here. I don't even mind the aggression here. I mean, if they go for a Diablo again, man, they are fighting in the lane sometimes, and sometimes for a while. With the Apocalypse, you can actually catch Abathur and his clones out a little bit. So they showed playmaking ability with the Diablo. Why not go ahead and put faith in that again? wonder if Cynix is going to prioritize the Illidan. There it is. With the uh, with such, being such a strong combination with the Abathur, I think Cynix almost had to go with the Illidan pick there. I'm more impressed with the Arthas pick. Taking that away, Abathur Arthas as an Illidan counter. They take what they want. They take the Illidan, who surprisingly can outpush an Abathur in a lane. Uh, and then they take away the counter to that too. So now what do you do? Yeah, full aggression on display once again in this one. Going to be coming in from Team Cynics. So yeah, it puts it puts Flame is Lame in kind of an awkward position. They do have the ability to maybe go with the Uther um, this time around. Getting Uther maybe for the first time today, I believe. As well as uh, maybe going after that Genji that they had last time. Abathur Genji is another really strong combination that they could go after here. But uh, didn't really work too well against their Illidan on the last game. I think what Flame is Lame is going to do here... Oh, I was going to say the Genji. The Cassia is a little bit of a of a counter here is a little bit surprising. They've already locked up their back line, their front line, and their support haven't been picked up here. Uh, it looks like Cynics might just be able to go a little bit heavier and just force them out. Uh, pick another bigger body and just walk right through them. Yeah, I really like the position that Cynics is in in the draft right now. We'll have to see if they're able to uh, continue to put flame is lame in this awkward position but when you look at abathur cassia and genji that is an awkward start to a draft for flame is lame if i've ever seen one yeah i do like the idea behind it you know cassia with charged strikes forces a team to kind of split up with the genji genji's looking for those stragglers and the ones that get caught in, in odd positions out by themselves so you know with this charge strikes double genji abathur style they might be on to something here Flame is lame. Going to go ahead and take out the Uther. But you know what's left up here is that Tassadar Rhaegar that Cynix could decide to go New into. Healer still me. needing to be picked up here uh, for the side of Flame is lame. So uh, probably want to pick it up here if you're Team Cynix. Pick up what you want in the support department so that you don't have to worry about Flame is lame stealing what you want. Both of those are extremely punishing for someone like Cassia. Uh, where you can really just slow her down, get her within range of Arthas, and as soon as she's in range of Arthas, she is not leaving. I have to see where Team Cynics really wants to go with this. They do already have the aggression, aggression so you want something that can definitely enable that. Um, Tassadar has been one of the most highly prioritized heroes in this draft, so I would be shocked if they don't pick that up here to pair with the Illidan. But, um... I don't I think know. Tastahaka. Oh, there it is. I think it would have been Tastahaka. That would have been GG. They could have picked up any support. Malfurion, ETC. They were fast on that ETC. Yeah, they knew exactly what they wanted there. So Flame is lame. They are getting what they want. I'll tell you that much right now. Uh, good CC potential. Good chase potential with the Genji. A double Genji getting into the back line after the Rhaegar could be a scary thing to have to deal with. What's uh, Team Cynix got to got to got to pick their last pick here? What do you think they're gonna get, Hero? Fortunately, Li Ming and Falstad are both up. Just depends on their style here. They can go Falstad for that gust, Li Ming for the wave of force. Falstad for that global here doesn't hurt. And the hammering onto Cassia definitely do do some work. I think they've got lots of options. I am liking Team Cynix's draft. I, I agree. I like the position that they're in right here. 
They have one more pick to round it out. Um, I think you, you, you make an interesting point about Dahaka. Are we about to see Towers of Doom where Dahaka just goes completely unbanned and unpicked in this draft? Kind of strange. Well, Lunara coming out to try and punish that solo support. They're going full damage potential here. They're going to put out as much as they can to try and pressure that Malfurion. Wow, I'm, I'm really surprised uh, picking up someone like Lunar. Now, Lunar is fairly good at kiting ETC. She can also do a ton against Cassia, and you know every now and then she can land some DPS onto Genji. I'm just really surprised they didn't go for any of those other options that were still left on the table. You know, I really like the Lunara pickup uh, because of the mobility as well. She's a very highly mobile hero with that extra run speed. Um, she also can get a lot of value out of the Tassadar shields and the self heals. Um, but uh, you're, you are right that I, th I think an ability damage dealer could have maybe done a little bit better against the Cassia blinds. But uh, that that's really it. They got the one blind over on the side of... Uh, Flame is lame, and that, that blind can only be aimed at so many targets. Do you want to blind the Illidan, or do you want to blind the Lunara? Either way, I think we're in for a great next game here. Towers of Doom. Let's get to it. Game number three. Flame is lame versus Team Cynics for all the marbles tonight. Our last match of the evening. On the left, Flame is lame. Trap Queen, going to be playing the Abathur. Deadly Ice on the Genji. Dark Chimera, going to be playing the Malfurion. Shot is going to be on ETC. And Legend will be playing Cassia. Team Cynics showing up. You got Vireno one more time on that Illa. Xander on Tassadar. Zanehide going to be running Arthas. You've got uh, Caleb Reese switching it up to Rhaegar and Valmar on Lunara. And right away, Flame is lame, rotating to the mid, looking to see if they can catch anybody out. They do have good CC potential with that um, slide into the roots. So they do have the ability to maybe try and catch somebody out here. But Cynics, once again, staying back, staying safe, prioritizing the soak here. They know that they can get an early advantage on this Abathur comp, and they can start to snowball. So that's going to be their play here. Really interesting. Abathur is actually going into a mines build on this one. That tells me they really want to slow down rotations, and they may actually have something there because they do have slower rotations on the side of Team Cynics with the Lunara, who, you know, she does have faster regular move speed, but she doesn't have mount speed. So if they can catch her, slow her down, make sure she's not in a lot of these fights, they may be able to find some opportunity here where they have some odd man fights. Yeah, right now, uh, rotational advantage definitely going over to the side of Flame is lame. Uh, Team Cynics being very careful, staying back, and uh, I don't know, against the Abathur, I feel like that's uh, kind of opposite of what you'd expect to see Xander barely making it out there. Deadly Ice with some serious harass up in that top lane. Yeah, they're holding their lanes very well, and they're not taking a lot of damage early either. You know, if you get... Uh, get later into Towers of Doom, you know. In this first phase, as the Abathur composition, you're expecting to only get one of those one of those altars. And if you're able to catch uh, a lot of extra structural damage with some of these sappers, I think you're actually coming out ahead. Yeah, very early sapper invasion. Flame is lame. Definitely not uh, hiding anything in this last one. You know, full bore in with the macro plays once again. And while Triple Altar Phase has spawned here, slide in onto the Arth as Zanehide caught out a little bit here. Xander going to have to get in there to get the shield onto him. And right now, they are doing a really nice job of stalling. They trade out these two towers in the uh, top left and the mid, but Zanehide getting poked down, barely going to make it out here. Xander also getting poked very low, but Deadly Ice poked low in response. Yeah, it seems really unlikely to hear that they'll actually get the cap on here. So I think they're really just looking to stall them out here. But if they get a takedown here, Zanehide low, Caleb Reese and Vireno getting low on the back line here too. They do get the capture all the way through. Deadly Ice gets the finish onto Caleb Reese. And let's see if they can escape with a few more. Dark Chimera also getting very low. Both teams going to be content to back out. Flame is lame. Picking up first blood, but two of the altars going over to Team Cynics. 
about half a level lead, and we talked about it earlier, Hero. We did see a Towers of Doom match where Flame is lame, just prioritizing the early XP lead, not worrying about those early shots. It seems like that's what they're going to do again here. Yeah, you get two shots, but we're going to get that level 10 first, and then we'll see who wins this game. Flame is lame, working that macro game. Cynics, though, has made good decisions in the other two games, so I wouldn't put it past them to respond well here, and they started off by taking the sappers in the top lane. You do see some top damage coming in from these sappers. Seeing the response in the bottom lane with those sappers picked up from Flame is lame, and yet again, rotating and invading. Look at the mine placement here. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody walks into that bush, they are going to be sorry that they did. Let's we'll see if Abathur can get himself a pick before level 10 comes in here. But, uh, right now, like the... Cynic's playing safe. Yeah, I like the priority this time around here. Flame is lame, prioritizing the bottom lane. Last time around, we actually saw a double... Uh two heroes up in the top lane making that rotation. This time they get the bottom here. Vireno, Valmar, and Xander take the top, but I'd argue if this is a double spawn in the bottom two lanes here, Flame is Lame has got the advantage. Yeah, pretty high likelihood, but there it is actually in the top lane right as I say that. Um, we do see it in the top, so that's actually going to be slight advantage to Cynix. Uh, Flame is Lame not going to have the availability to rotate up and out. They can only rotate back or down so a little bit of an advantage for cynics there but nothing that flame is lame isn't prepared to deal with they could also just decide to trade out here but they are going full aggro mode here for reno taking a little bit of poke getting healed right back up and look at the turn here cynics going in deep they are getting legend very very low he's going to end up being the first to fall here we do see abathur able to sneak into the back there and cast theirs however they will end up with a trade this time it's going to be a one-for-one one trade with one uh, with one pick going over to the time side of Team Cynics. One-for-one one trade, but they lose a member on their team, and that's Cassia going down. Like I said, once she gets slowed, once she's in Arthas's range, she is not leaving, and they kept her. Yeah, full invasion here by Cynics. They are... Uh, Changing up their play style a little bit in this one. Going to invade and prioritize in the bottom now that they have those top sappers. Shot and Dark Chimera going to make sure they uh, get one of these sappers out. And they're actually going to do a nice job of cleaning up these sappers. And yeah, with the Abathur composition, I mean, they're only slightly near that. We've got Deadly Ice split off to try and clear up that top lane, but Vireno is going to trade that out with his team here. They've got a sapper. It's very, very even. One takedown apiece, one ultra advantage over the side of Team Cynics here, and they're looking to push in a little bit. Yeah, level 10 about to come in for both teams. Flame is lame. is going to get it a little bit faster, and it uh, looks like right now that's going to give them the opportunity to clear this out safely in the bottom lane. Both teams trade out these altars, and we are back to even, except for the four core lead for the side of Cynics right now. Heroics online, and this is what we've been waiting. Game, if you want to play to your potential, it's a mosh pit. If you can make that happen, you can single-handedly change the outcome of a game. You're, you've also got Twilight Dream Dragon Blade. Those things don't hurt either. Let's see how this next team fight plays out over a single alter. Wombo combo potential coming out here from the side of Flame is Lame. Meanwhile, more zoning potential and more single target focus for Cynics, which has kind of been their game. So we'll have to see which one wins out here in the eternal struggle. Zanehide going in deep here is deep in the belly of the monster here. We'll have to get a very early ancestral from Caleb Reese. Vireno, meanwhile, in the back line, trying to uh, get some solid damage going. But the huge mosh pit in response here and trades all over the place. Three for three. And we are left with a 2v2 where Vireno and uh, Zanehide are looking at shot. And they're going to be able to turn here. And it is just the Abathur clone left after that shot makes it out. But uh, Cynics going to end up being able to cap this shrine. A little bit of an advantage for them coming out here, but very even team fight. Wow. 
shot with the hat will still be able to delay the Zane Hyde does not have this capture we're gonna have a second team fight for this altar here and if Shot can actually get this takedown before the rest of the team comes uh, they might have something here Roots coming out also there from Dark Chimera you're right full recommitment from both of these teams but this time it's Vireno that falls first and Flame is Lame is gonna be the one pushing out now and they are able to come back and pick up this altar and it is going to be even on the core health half a level lead for flame is lame even in the structures at the moment could you ask for a better game three here hero no no this is as exciting as it gets and this is probably the most that i've cast in hgc open and so everyone here is in for a really good show flame is lame played that extremely well there was a three-man mosh pit. Dragon Blade got a ton of value. And even though they traded three for three, they were still able to escape with just barely a sliver of health on shot. Come back, get the delay, turn things around. It's 28 shots to 28. Yet again, both teams uh, just going to opposite sides of the map here. We are going to see the Sappers being picked up in the top. But Deadly Ice rotating up here can actually prevent these guys from getting on into the structures. And look at the rotation coming in here from Flame is Lame. They are looking for picks and looking to try to defend this bell tower in the bottom. Wow, Zane Hyde with the early army of the dead actually soaks up all those towers. The team comes in. Dark Chimera is going to be caught out here as well. Cassia already going down. Shot leaves them all. And that's actually going to be two takedowns against them. Just when you think Flame is Lame is starting to get a big advantage... Yeah. Look at the staggered death. You know what I really like? I feel like Cynics could have finished off that kill a little bit quicker on the Malfurion, but they want to stagger that out as far as humanly possible because they know this altar spawn is coming in the bottom. They don't want this to be a fair fight. Why would they? And they're actually looking to take this bottom bell tower too. If they can do this, they're going to jump ahead here. Five shots over top of Flame is Lame. And with Vireno working away on it already, they've definitely got a shot at turning this yeah really strong siege potential both from the illidan and from that double lightning bond talent at one from caleb reese and they are indeed going to be able to do that valimar also having good siege potential xander just stands there and casts on it not unlike an asmodan and we'll see this going over to the side of team cynics as they are going to give themselves a nice comfortable lead going into the second half of this one makes that channel through the force while holding deadly ice the hunt coming in that's dark chimera we're looking for a marsh pit here shot in the middle of this man's land here and now it's going to be the turn the dragon blade no ancestral healing to connect here protected genji may get away here valimar leaping over and shot is taking all the damage trap queen's clone is going to go down here xander backs up and at least takes the sappers but that's going to be a two for one trade flame is lame Coming back out on top. Hero, slain. Hero, I think that may have been the most impactful zero-man mosh pit I've ever seen in my life. Splitting up the team of Cynics despite not catching anyone. Allowing the side of Flame is Lame to be able to get some isolated kills. And then they, the mobility that they have with that Genji on Deadly, uh, Deadly Ice on Genji there. Being able to rotate around, get those finishing blows and... Uh, Really be able to turn this their way once again. Level 16, about a level lead. However, level 16 will be here in short order for Cynics. We'll reset, and we're going to have another even fight when this next Alter space phase comes out. You're right. Zoning Mosh confirmed. That was actually in the best position there. It cut off a lot of different uh, points of entry there. And so even though you don't get anybody, you really did separate the team. And that allowed for those takedowns. Those are the fights that Genji thrives in. He wants you to be split up after the Dragon Blade, after he gets that AoE damage. But now the triple spawn. We've got 28 shots to 23. Team Cynics here hovering around the boss. Full commitment to the top. And the Chinese Bush meta is real from both of these teams right now. And uh, we do see that uh, I'm going to leave the bottom open. Both teams going to leave it open here. Oh, and look at the focus down here. On to Dark Chimera. The 
counter engagement here with the Twilight Dream. Many members getting low, but it is going to be Dark Chimera being the first to fall. And a huge Mosh Pit once again, zoning out the members right in that alleyway there. However, Team Cynics still on the chase here, able to get the double kill, able to push them out here. Abathur going to go to the bottom to be able to cast the bottom one. But that's going to be yet another two of these altars going over to the side of Team Cynics. Now they can turn around and get the boss as well. Zanehide's positioning there was incredible. Locking down Malfurion, forcing him to use his Ice Block, but he walked past him, got the Body Block. Didn't matter if there was a Twilight Dream. He already had the Army of the Dead out. So then he just walks backwards. That lets Illidan finish the fight off. Good Mosh to get the takedown. But that was enough. Genji goes down. Malfurion goes down. They get the double capture. 24 shots to 11. Team Cynics with the lead. Yeah, you gotta be you gotta be in a good mood right now if you are Team Cynics. However, still a full level lead over on the side of Flame is lame. This one is far from being over. As uh, that level 20 advantage should be coming in right around the time we see that next altar phase. So we'll have to see. Exactly how Flame is Lame can uh, take advantage of that. Yeah, this is this is getting later and later into the game here where you know, Abathur should be getting a little bit more value. But when I look over at his build, it's mines, it's a mule, and it's a little bit of split pushing. So their team fight is actually, in my mind, a little bit weaker now because of it. They're actually totally in it for that macro play they're hoping at this point i think they were hoping to have four to five bell towers under their belt there's another rough spot here uh in the rotations but this time it's going to be team cynics it's going to have a bit of an odd rotation but actually they'll be able to rotate in and get this mid uh bell tower in time that i take it back however level 20 is here for flame is lame so we'll have to see if Cynix even wants any part of this, and the answer is decidedly no. This is very disciplined coming out from Team Cynix here. No, no level 20, but they have four of the Bell Towers captured, so really they're only giving up six shots, and they actually catch <laughs> Abathur up in the top lane with that rotation. What an amazing rotation from Team Cynix. Catching, trap, uh, catching the Abathur out. Wow. Uh... I just keep getting more and more in awe of Team Cynics in this one. They are making the macro plays. They are they are going toe to toe here with one of our better teams in HGC. Cynics putting on a show for us tonight, showing us that they are here to stay in the HGC Open Division. I mean, with this kind of a performance, Team Cynics is potentially a top four team here in the HGC Open. And if they actually take this series, they will be a top four in this fifth cup. I'm gonna rotate to the bottom and grab this sapper camp. Maybe put a little bit of pressure in this bot lane. Level 20s are online now for the side of Team Cynics. They can fight. Zanehide keeping an eye on the rotations here from Flame is Lame. That's gonna be a full commitment to the bottom. Like Zaynod. We've, we've got Evolutionary Link coming out from Abathur here. We're going to have to keep a close eye on who that clone target is. Uh, but Mosh Pit here, that's going to be the real story. Tour bus taken. I think we might be taking ourselves on a little bit of a tour here. If we get a good Mosh, that could be the beginning of the end, the turn of the game. Let's see how this next fight plays out. This full rotation in by the side of Team Cynics. They're gonna be able to pick up that bell tower. Yet again, more on the line here for Flame is Lame. They really need to be able to get this altar. They are leading Zanehide into all these mines though, but look at them clear it out. So disciplined. Meanwhile, Shot is gonna be able to get that tour bus going, but it's blocked by Xander and the Force Wall. The Ancestral though, not in time to save the Illidan and Valimar jumping all over this one as they are able to take out ETC in response, 4v4 here. Trap Queen trying to do what he can with that, that clone on the Cassia, but they are able to turn that around. The Ancestral's in time to save Valimar. Dark Chimera gonna ice block, but it's gonna be too little too late. Team Cynics coming out with the huge team fight. Four for one exchange. 
And they are going to be able to push through this bottom bell tower and take a commanding lead here in game three. Xander, I don't know if you knew what you just did, but you saved your entire team from the tour bus. Putting down that force wall, I wasn't sure if that was meant to go there or if he was just trying to catch him in there or, or just hold the rest of the team at bay. But Xander stopped that tour bus from getting on to about three heroes in the back line. Huge death coming out from Genji with the Dragon Blade there. He was getting some resets, but tons of poison damage forced him out. He was able to stay alive just for a brief moment. The clone actually went out onto Cassia there, but she was taken down as well. Uh, it's a really tough fight there. Flame is lame with just a few shots left, and there are multiple ways to win here as you see the sappers rolling down the bottom lane. Illidan also getting started on the boss in the top, or was well, looking at it at least. Abathur end up, ends up falling here, though. Now, that's going to be another big pick going over to the side of Team Cynix. They're trying to push in the bottom here. But uh, they got another three sappers marching down here. This is going to be it if they can score these. But Flame is Lame is going to be here on time to contest it. So this looks like it's going to turn out into another full-on team fight. Two more shots is all they need. Deadly Ice is going up to scout the boss. Vereno has it at half here. And Deadly Ice is going to start putting the pressure on him. So if they can defend the boss, that takes care of one threat. But down the bottom lane, that one sapper is really trying to make his way through. This is the part of the job where I definitely don't want to be the observer having to go back and forth between these things, Hero. But you're right. The split pressure was good. Team Cynix putting all the pressure in the world onto Flame is Lame. But they handled that pretty darn well. They're able to clean up the, uh, the sappers in the bottom. They're able to prevent Vereno from finishing the boss. But now the boss has been started, and this is it. Back against the walls for Flame is Lame with this boss attempt. They're actually going to keep it alive here, as uh, we do see that Avatar has come back to life. Dark Chimera getting focused here, but uh, right away the Ancestral coming out a little bit early there. The Mosh Pit is good to be able to stop Vereno, but ETC gets blown up in response, and it looks like right now that uh, Deadly Ice is going to be able to clean up a couple members and all of a sudden Flame is lame. Able to pick up a team fight win right when they needed it the most. Flame is lame. 16 takedowns. They get that full team wipe. This gets them back in the game. Two shots left. This is Towers of Doom. The game doesn't end until the core is down. Now, they've got to take back one of these bell towers here. That'll at least get them four shots, but they've still got 14 more to go. The boss is up. You've got multiple camps, so you can hopefully take some of those sappers, reset that bottom lane, push that back out. Flame is lame. Still in it. A moment to breathe here for Flame is lame. This is exactly what they needed to be able to get back into this one. Amazing last couple of minutes of this game by Flame is Lame. It's easy to get tilted. It's easy to get uh, thrown off guard there as Trap Queen got picked at the end there. It's a 4v5 situation, but they do defend the boss. They do defend the sappers in the bot, and they are able to win the team fight over the boss at the end there. And now they're going to be able to take the boss as well, even it out ten, 2 to 10. Still in a rough spot here for Flame is Lame. Let's uh, wait just a minute. Let <laughs> What a root there by Dark Chimera to keep them out. And now it looks like Flame is Lame is full on on the retreat mode here. Look at the uh, the ults popped here. Hunt is down. And now also probably the bigger deal here is that Zanehyde is no longer going to have the Army of the Dead ready for him. Yeah, and so there's a window here. Again, ET Mosh Pit wasn't up for that, but it's just coming off of cooldown here. So if they can look for a fight here. Only Ancestral. Hunt will be back up. Uh but no army of the dead, and that's huge. Oh, and the pick coming out onto Tassadar. Huge rotation from Flame is Lame. Flame is Lame now. They've actually got multiple bell towers now, and this is the power of the late game Abathur, who's been pushing slowly. This bottom bell tower goes down. The middle is going to go down eventually here too. Double spawn now though, and actually with with four bell towers, Flame is Lame could end it here. But huge play there, Deadly Ice also taking down the Illidan, and I don't know, Cynix starting to be tested in their resolve as they start to stagger these deaths at the end. 
And uh, this is it. Ten shots are on the line here with these bell towers for Flame is lame. They know they need to go. Zanehide is going in, so they're going to contest it anyway. Avatar already casting in the bot. The uh, Ancestral comes out, but it's just too much pressure here in this 4v5 situation. Or, uh, I should say 3v5 situation. They are able to get the pick out there, and that is going to pretty much do it here. I don't know that there's anything that Cynics can do here, Hero. Really tough defense there. You saw Arthas try to go in. Not enough. Flame is lame. Taking that with two points left. GG. Well played the entire series. What a comeback from Flame is lame in this game number three. Establishing their place in the HGC Open Division. But you can't take a single thing away from that performance tonight from Team Cynics. They are here and they are going to be a force to be reckoned with moving forward in the HGC division. Yeah, shout outs to both teams. An amazing series played by both. You know, Flame is Lame showing composure. When you see two out of 40 on your side, sometimes you just throw the hands up in the air, but you show composure, you push your way through, you earn that win. That's a win that you earn. Late in the game here, Team Cynics, I think they could have pulled it together. They just needed two more shots somewhere. They were so close so many times. Big team fights coming out from Flame is Lame. A best of three. We got our money's worth for this series. Absolutely. Both these teams putting on quite a show for everyone. I want to thank everybody for coming out. An amazing stream, an amazing HGC Open coverage today. Uh, Hero, thank you so much for coming out and joining me. It was a pleasure casting with you, as always. Do you have anything you want to say before we sign off here? No, thank you for having me on here. Always a cast. I think the stars must have aligned, and we got ourselves some good matches tonight. So I'm just happy to be a part of it all. Make sure you support Jason here. He's doing some good work on the channel. Throw him some follows. Uh, make sure you stick around. I mean, we're here week after week. Trying to, trying to get more Heroes content out there. Uh, just hope you all enjoy it. Yeah, it was a pleasure to have you here, Hero. You're uh, definitely one of my favorite people to do the duo casting with. You guys should also definitely jump over to Hero Physio's channel and give him a, a solid follow. He's definitely got a lot of good content that he's putting out with uh, HGC Wide Open. And all kinds of good stuff to help you guys get better at the game, keep keep up to date with everything and he's casting quite a lot of good heroes of the storm action as well and as for me guys that is going to do it for me tonight we definitely like you said hero we got our money's worth out of this hgc open division tournament so far it's going to be uh, exciting to see where the brackets go from here and where flame is lame ends up tomorrow night they definitely played late into the night and i want to thank all you guys for staying up late with us through the uh through the late games and um uh, we will see you guys in a couple of weeks for more HGC Open Division action. Make sure to tune in tomorrow night for the final four on the main streams. I think RK and 8 will be covering that as usual. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Take care.